But my journey was, my inner journey, was that the first half of my life, I showed up to be what I thought everybody expected of me. Mm. That was stressful. And then the second half of my life, I started discovering myself. The question is, how can we support one another to live our highest values in mm. all aspects of our lives? I'm thinking about the time that I felt I was a failure as a leader. I'm a nine to five girl, but not the nine to five that most people think of. Hello, my friend. My name is Terry Petrovic, and for the past 25 years, I've been teaching, coaching, and training people how to create a better quality of life being an entrepreneur. My road has had some ups and downs, and I really believe um, as we move through life, uh, as we face our challenges, we all need from time to time to reach out to people, to maybe expose ourselves to different types of thinking, different philosophies, and different ways of being. Now, my guest today is the co-founder of the Geneva Group, which is a network of business people that came together to help each other live their highest life in every part of their life, especially their businesses. She is the author of the award-winning book, Revolutionary Agreements, A Personal Path to Peace on Earth. Uh, she is a master, and just my guest today is the wonderful Marion Head. Marion, thanks so much for being here. Wow. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. You know, you've created a quality of life that, you know, is absolutely amazing. Um, what was your journey like and where'd you come from and how'd you get there? <laughs> well, I grew up on an egg farm <laughs> in New Jersey and I grew up, um, I was very fortunate because my parents were both home on the farm and my grandparents had a farm down the road. I had another set of grandparents upstairs. I grew up in a community. Yeah, and my whole life has been really about community. I, when I went to the university, I stayed in that house until I went to the University of Maryland. Uh, I lived in a dormitory, and that was a community. And everything I did was a community. But my journey was, my inner journey, was that the first half of my life, I showed up to be what I thought everybody expected of me. Mm -hmm. That was stressful. That was stressful. It just was. And then the second half of my life, I started discovering myself. And I'm still discovering myself because it's a never ending process. That's what life is for, is self discovery and discovering who I am in relationship to you and to the people who are listening to me and others. And, and that's my joy also. So um, I wound up in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. Uh, I was in the profession of professional training, and I got involved in professional associations. I became a speaker. I met my second husband. We'll just skip the first one. <laughs> that was just, that was practice. We'll talk about practice too, Terry. I want to make sure to get back to the word practice. Um, I met my second husband in Montreal at an international conference. We were both speakers on the platform, and we just connected. We were meant to be together. and It's now been almost 35 years. He's my biggest fan, bigger than Amy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's important to have somebody to support you. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the story. First half, like, how can I be good enough to my teachers, my parents, professionally? I worked really hard. And the second half has been more about who am I? And there was something I read in a book that was very helpful during my transition time, which was, would you rather have hundreds of people who like you for who you pretend to be or a few who love you for who you are? Mm. <sighs> I think a lot of people struggle with, with, with that one. And, you know, one of the Ooh. things I would ask you is, how do you have that courage? That the, I do think it takes courage to be your true authentic self and not worry mm -hmm. about the judgment that family, friends, or whatever are going to impose on you? Well, it is a practice, actually. And I was very fortunate when I first moved to Boulder from Washington, D.C., which was quite a culture shock, <laughs> to um, 
Glenn, my husband, was the president then of something called the Win-Win Business Forum, which was a pretty new idea in those days where everybody wins, your vendors, your employees, you know, the company is profitable. And every week they had speakers and out of that and out of some a personal growth course that we all did together, he invited some key business people to our home. And the question is, was, is still, how can we support one another to live our highest values in mm. all aspects of our lives? And especially at work where we spend most of our time. We came up with a set of agreements at that first gathering to guide us on that path. And Terry, that has made a huge difference in my life. But it's not like just having agreements on paper helps. It's a practice. So one of the agreements is I agree to speak my truth with compassion, which means being honest. Oh, with compassion, which means with the well-being of myself and the other in mind at that time. It's a practice. It's not something that comes easily. It's much easier to just blame, <laughs> you know, blame somebody and justify why I did what I did. But to be really honest and compassionate with myself and with others, you know, that's a big one. And then another agreement is I agree to respect our differences. And, oh, here's one of the key ones. I agree to see the best in myself and others. So that addresses what you just asked. That's, yeah. a, huge, that's a huge practice. Yeah, I think if everybody could show up and, and be true to those, that would be life-changing for sure. Yeah, and they're behind me, by the way. I don't know if you can read them. I, I can't see it, but I have it on my wall, actually. <laughs> in, that, in that room over there. <laughs> Already. <laughs> All of these years, it's, it's been there. Yeah, we absolutely love them.